prophecy is true. Good afternoon you way bastards and welcome back to War Thunder with Koala and in today's video I want to talk about battle rating compression and what I think is the next logical step towards fixing it. Now I know I've discussed battle rating compression and decompression many times in the past but for any of you who don't quite understand we're talking about how vehicles that should be more than a certain battle rating gap away for the sake of balance are forced closer to each other because there isn't enough room with our current battle rating spread to split them any further apart. The more spaced out battle ratings are, the more decompressed they get, the better balance we're able to achieve in game, because vehicles can sit in a spot where they're still good enough to be functional in a full up tier, but not completely overpowered in a full down tier. Just before update 1.93 rolled out, Gaijin introduced a new battle rating ceiling of 10.3 for all of our rank 7 main battle tanks and some of our surface to air missile defence systems, along with many of our top performing jets and helicopters. Finally, 9.0 vehicles like the F-86 Sabres or Chieftain Mark X need no longer fight against MiG-21s or Leopard 2A5s and Eurocopter Tigers respectively, which they never should have had to, it wasn't reasonable to expect. This I referred to as the most important baby steps in War Thunder's history, because while it was a very good thing for us to get some semblance of battle rating decompression, simply raising the very top vehicles by one step did not fix all of our problems. It did get me quite hopeful however, which is why I'm making this video, because I think I know what our next step should be. What we're looking for is a consistent relationship in which a fully down tiered vehicle is still counterable, while that same vehicle fully up tiered is still capable, albeit not on par. As an example, take the Panzer 4G at battle rating 4.0 in the German tech tree. Despite being at an obvious disadvantage, a decent player can still reasonably be expected to perform well against vehicles at 5.0, the tank's maximum up tier. At the same time, fully down tiered to 3.0, the tank isn't necessarily overpowered, because those 3.0s have the same capability, they might not be equal, but they're not so far behind as to be useless, which means that the Panzer 4G must be in the right spot. This is also the type of relationship we should have at top tier, but Gaijin obviously doesn't want to just string out all the battle ratings all the way up to, say, 14.0, so that a 9.3 vehicle could have that same relationship, still being worthwhile in an up tier, not too far behind, but not being too powerful to contend with in a down tier. And Given how much kicking and screaming the community had to do just to receive that raise to 10.3, I don't think it's reasonable of us to expect that this full decompression will happen anytime soon. Gaijin does raise some legitimate concerns, reasons why it can't happen, the two biggest ones being the subsequent lengthening of queue times at high tiers, and a lack of variety of vehicles in the matchmaker. Now I know that many of you might argue with this, saying that balance is more important because it keeps more players playing, makes it far more enjoyable to grind, allowing more players to be at top tier, and will have them playing the types of vehicles that just don't see much use right now because their matchmaker is too compressed. The T10M, AMX-30 Brennus, or Rakitin Jagdpans are too hot, giving us more variety if those vehicles become more lucrative to play. As soon as you jump in a 9.3 T64A right now, you're almost guaranteeing that you will fight opponents you are just not equipped to even be a threat to, like an M182 Abrams or Leopard 2A5, they're just gonna laugh at you. How is a UH-1D meant to deal with an ADAT? How is an F-40 Sabre meant to deal with a MiG-19S? So I hope I might have convinced you, if you weren't already convinced, that further decompression is necessary and 90% of the player base would tend to agree, I imagine. Whatever you think our ceiling should currently be, some players just want it to be extended to 11.0 and that would be enough, some players suggest 12.0, 14.0 or even higher. Me, I think 14.0 sounds good, but if Gaijin isn't willing to do that all at once, then what should our next step be? You might have noticed that the gameplay I've had playing in the background of this video is in three different vehicles, the American M60, the German Leopard 1 and the Soviet T-54 Mod 1951. What do all three of these vehicles have in common? Well, they're some of our first true main battle tanks and they all sit at BR 7.7. In a down tier, these tanks fight against King Tigers, T-34s, Tortoises, etc. While in an up tier, they have to deal with Type 74Gs, Leopard L44s and AMX-30 Supers. 
In fairness, neither of these scenarios are balanced at all, and that's why I think these 7.7 .7 main battle tanks are where we should look next for battle rating decompression to happen. This is a convenient location because every nation has an equivalent to these main battle tanks. Besides the three I just mentioned, there's also the Japanese STB-1, the Italian OF-40 and the French AMX-30. Britain currently has none, but they could have a perfect equivalent if the Vickers MBT Mark III were added, and America also has the premium Magash III. All of these tanks are second generation MBTs, besides the T-54 which is considered first generation, even though, and here's the kicker, all of these tanks are basically balanced against each other and counter each other perfectly. I think it's right here that we establish the difference between a medium tank and a main battle tank, although I will say before we even try to distinguish them that that line can and will get blurry, so we're also going to factor in how these tanks function in War Thunder gameplay on top of their roles and designations in real life. In what we're going to call the Old Doctrine, World War II being the easiest and most complete example, you have light, medium and heavy tanks and tank destroyers. Without delving too deeply into their individual uses, each of the four types had their specific roles in which they were designed to excel and needed other types to supplement them and fulfil the roles which they could not. A light tank was a forward scout or a versatile defensive screening tank, but it could they tackle direct fire situations. Heavies provided extreme firepower and protection under duress and were particularly good at assaulting fortified defensive enemy positions at the expense of mobility and versatility. Medium tanks were the backbone of a force and excelled at infantry support. They could be quickly and easily deployed, but compromised on armour, speed and firepower. They were a jack of all trades, master of none. Lastly, tank destroyers were defensive types, mobile in order to move them to the desired location but they'd ideally remain almost stationary during a battle itself, designed solely to combat advancing enemy armour. There are exceptions to these four, of course, but never mind them for now. Doctrine changed as more powerful guns and engines came into being, and the idea of the main battle tank, a single vehicle type that could perform all four basic roles, was born. Of course, the first thing to happen was that armour practically ceased to be required for defence from enemy tanks, as ammunition had developed to such a degree that no tank could be expected to defeat such shells and still remain at all mobile, which is what we see with main battle tanks such as the Leopard or AMX-30. Until the advent of composite armour and its widespread use on tanks like the T-72, Abrams and Leopard 2, the armour of these MBTs was designed to protect their occupants from small arms fire and AT rifles. The power from that ammunition and the development of more advanced fire control systems, rangefinders, etc. meant that a single vehicle could do anything that any of the old Doctrine tanks could. Main battle tanks had no need of other tank types in order to make up for their shortcomings as, quite simply, they had none. They brought firepower, usually reserved for heavy tanks, onto economic medium tank chassis and retained excellent mobility, making them capable of rapid deployment and a wide versatility by comparison. They were able to fulfil the defensive screening role that light tanks had assumed and could deal with any enemy threat they came across as efficiently as a tank destroyer, as well as retaining the role of infantry support. In short, they did everything. Now, in War Thunder, we don't have infantry, obviously. We don't have to worry about doctrines or battalions or fielding of tanks from an economic sense, and because of that, everything is a tank destroyer. What do you do in War Thunder? You destroy tanks, whether you're in a Hellcat or Jagdpanzer, or a Churchill or PT-76. However, the main battle tanks we begin to see at BR 7.7 .7 do bring with them a distinct change in the way the game is played. They have a very different style of use, and they don't mix all that well with tanks of quote-unquote the old doctrine. These tanks actually find it tougher in many regards to engage King Tigers than they do other 7.7 .7 main battle tanks, while at the same time a King Tiger is completely redundant when compared to these MBTs. It's similar to the situation of the T2 facing Sabres in air realistic battles. The fighting styles are so different that they don't even make sense to each other, and that kind of masks the OP-ness of these vehicles. These doctrines shouldn't have really crossed very much, if at all, which is why I suggest, and this is the main point of this video, up-tiering all of our 7.7 .7 main battle tanks to 8.0, and up-tiering every vehicle already at 8.0 to 8.3, raising all the 8.3s to 8.7, and so on and so forth, all the way to top tier, which would see the tanks that recently became 10.3s go up to 10.7. 
Now, there are some exceptions I want to talk about, of course, so hold on just a moment before you argue one way or another in the comments. But first, I want to say that we do have a precedent for Gaijin doing exactly this. When the Abrams was released in update 1.77, it was placed at battery rating 9.3. Soon enough, it went up to 9.7 alongside the Leopard 2A4 and Type 90 when they were added, and those tanks were then raised again to 10.0, with many other Rank 6 tanks being raised by one step in order to decompress the BRs underneath them. The Chieftain Mark III and T62 went up to 8.3, for example. Now, statistics would not show you that these 7.7 .7 tanks need moving. They don't appear to be overpowered when you look at what they achieve. If they did, I wouldn't need to make this video. Stats hide why these tanks are too good, the reasons they don't appear to be an issue, why they're not necessarily doing better in our current game than an IS-4M for example, is because they're fighting the wrong tanks, they're treated like old doctrine medium tanks, and they're definitely not, there are very distinct differences. These MBTs were never designed in real life to combat a machine like a King Tiger, T-3485 perhaps, but not T-29s, Panther 2s, Tortoises or Yag Tigers. The design of those machines was already redundant and was never really seen again in a big way. Moving the MBTs up is not only better for balancing lower tier opponents whose armour becomes valid once again as armour still comprises the doctrine of warfare between those tanks, but our main battle tanks are going to be more consistently fighting the types of tanks they were designed to fight, the tanks that would be appropriate for them to fight. As long as we do simultaneously raise all the vehicles above them, these tanks get no worse, actually they should do better than they do currently, and the tanks beneath them will get a much needed breath of fresh air. We also start to dismantle that idea of black hole battle ratings, which I see as a very good thing and actually should improve the variety of vehicles played in a generic matchmaker. As for the tanks that would be moved specifically, we're talking about all the ones I mentioned earlier, the M60 and the Magash 3, Leopard 1, T54 Mod 1951, the Vickers Mark III I suggested be added, the STB1, OF40 and lastly the AMX30. Funnily enough, 7 of those 8 tanks I just mentioned use the 105mm L7 or M68 gun, mostly with comparable ammunition, only the Soviet T54 doesn't, although its ammunition is similar in performance. I also want to say that the Object 120 should already be an 8.0 and should go to 8.3 with this move, and just like with the second generation MBTs, it would actually find it easier to engage other tanks of its own doctrinal type than older, outdated tanks designed for a completely different fighting style. Yes, it is a tank destroyer, but it was designed to be a tank destroyer for the day of MBTs, which is why it never really got off the ground anyway. The only real tank that breaks the chain, or should I say reattaches the chain instead of splitting from the old doctrine, the T-10M. It's an MBT era heavy tank, and we'll come back to that one soon. This move would give us a whole battle rating with at least one vehicle for every nation, but doesn't they split things so far apart that either queue times or vehicle variety in matches would suffer any noticeable hit. In fact, I think it may improve, with many vehicles seeing more play than they currently do, and players enjoying the gameplay more at all BRs between 6.7 to, let's say, 8.3. The worst thing our 6.7 tanks will have to fight is the 7.7 .7 tanks of the old Doctrine, and those 7.7 .7 tanks will never have to fight the 8.7s they currently do. One interesting point I know many people may bring up is the T-54. In game, we have three variants of it, the 1947, 49 and 51. The 1947 model, I believe, should stay at battle rating 7.7, .7. even though it was considered a main battle tank in real life. In War Thunder, it doesn't really fit the bill for one, given that it lacks APDS and heat, meaning that it can struggle with penetration of some armoured opponents like the IS-4M, M103 or Mouse. Armour is still a consideration that it has to take into account, whereas a main battle tank is not supposed to have to worry about it. Take for example, the heat rounds of basically all the other tanks I've mentioned. The T-54-47 is more of a medium tank of the old Doctrine, although it's probably the best of them. The 1949 model with its APDS round but not heat FS is kind of in between, but I'd be inclined to again leave it at 7.7. .7. Sable is not a great shell, especially on the 100mm gun, APC-BC is still the round of choice for that tank, 
and it has awful torch of us, the worst of the three, less armor than the 1947, and obviously no heat FS. It's probably the worst of the bunch actually, and doesn't see much play anyway. Either way, the folders should be split up to represent the difference with the 1951 model T-54 sitting outside of the 47's bracket. Oddly enough, I remember suggesting this exact move over two years ago when the IS-6 went from 7.0 to 7.3 and the first black hole battle ratings became a thing in War Thunder. Anyone else remember those days? There are some other vehicles that I think should not move despite this change and I'm going to go through them from left to right in the tech trees, starting with the US. Firstly, the M60A2 Starship. I don't see it as an equal to the Sheridan with the same gun, given that by this tier, mobility rules the roost, and the so-called Starship's armor does nothing to make up for its sluggishness. Battle rating compression means it couldn't move down, while the Sheridan couldn't really move up, but now, we have a chance to fix that. The only other US tank I believe should not move is the T-54E1 Premium. It's honestly closer to the old Doctrine tanks than it is to a main battle tank, it's just a very futuristic design for one. All the German tanks can move up one spot nice and cleanly. As for the Russians, I don't think the T-10M or IS-7 should move. They are where they are because they're arguably the best of the old doctrine. They might be better than the Maus or IS-4, but they're not more threatening to an M60 or Leopard. Everything British can move easily. Yeah, I bet that's something you never thought you'd hear me say. Everything Japanese can go up. As for the Chinese and Italians, the M113A1 tow missile launchers I do not think need to move up, they're fine staying at 8.0. And lastly for France, just like the T54E1, the AMX50s Sir Blinde and Sir Base don't need to go up, they match more to the old doctrine than the new, and they're heavy tanks after all. As for lower tier tanks that do need to move up, once again starting from the Americans working left to right, the M50 Ontos and M48A1 pattern should be raised by one step putting the M48 on the same level as the first T-54, but still below the late T-54, M60 and other MBTs. I think that's where the M48 belongs, and it's very comparable to the T-54 Mod 1947. They're historical rivals, they're perfect balance counters to each other, and I don't think the pattern being at 7.3 is balanced, although it should be below something like the Leopard for example, which Given this change, it still will be. The Bradley I think should go up, so move twice, as should all the IFVs, so moving over to the Germans of course the BMP1 and then the M48A2C variant of the pattern, both should move up to 7.7. .7. The BMP1 is definitely of the MBT doctrine, not the old light, medium and heavy tank doctrine, and I've spoken in the past about how these infantry fighting vehicles are not the same thing as a light tank. Honestly, the BMP-1 kind of fits anywhere, 7.7 .7 to 8.3 kind of does the same thing. Honestly, the BMP-1 kind of fits anywhere, 7.7 .7 to 8.3 it kind of does the same thing. The RU-251 should also be up tiered probably to 7.3, although we need another German light tank to replace it, and preferably it's got to be one for the tech tree. Moving over to the Soviet Union, once again the BMP-1 and definitely the Object 120 Tehran. That thing could go up two positions to 8.3 alongside the M60A2, T95E1, etc. Above our MBTs and well above the damn King Tiger. The British, I think the Swingfire and Falcon should both go back up. It wasn't long ago that they were moved down and they weren't moved down because they were underpowered, they were moved down because of BR compression. Well, if we're making a move to fix this, then both those vehicles can go back up. As for Japan, the Type 61 is a maybe. It does have a very high penetrating heat FS round, and if we're moving the MBTs up and moving the M48 patterns back up away from it, it could move up to 7.0. I mean, 300mm plus heat versus Tiger 1s and sitting at the same tier as the Tiger 2 is a wee bit strange. The Type 61 was a main battle tank, more so than a medium tank, it's definitely of the new doctrine, but once again, that's a maybe, because the Type 61 isn't exactly known to be all that great in the first place right now, and I don't know if it's quite on par with the M46 pattern, although the first pattern could then go up to 7.3 alongside the M47, it's good enough for it. What should definitely go up is the Type 75, both of them, actually I think just like the MBTs and some of the other vehicles I've mentioned, these two indirect fire vehicles will actually be more capable of fighting lightly armoured main battle tanks and support vehicles than heavy tanks and such, and could actually be raised up quite a few BR steps, possibly both to 8.0 
where they wouldn't often have to fight tanks with a lot of armour. So, like our 7.7 .7 MBTs, they're not being raised up because they're overpowered at their current BR, far from it. They'd actually be better off higher up, and more suited to that style of gameplay at a higher BR. It's also more historically accurate for them to be at that sort of time frame, for what it's worth. I think we're likely to get more artillery like these, the M109, AS90, Type 83 and 2S3 Acacia, and if all of these go to 8.0, they have our IFBs to fight, and their toughest regular opponent is going to be a T62. They'll mostly be dealing with Leopards, AMX-30s and other lightly armoured main battle tanks, which they'll be much more capable of demolishing than an IS-3 or King Tiger, for example. For China, obviously the ZBD-86, or it's a BMP-1, and the M48A1 pattern once again. Also, the Type 62, but that's for a different reason, that thing is just kind of overpowered. <laughs> Actually, uh, don't up-tier that, Gaijin. <laughs> I love it so much. In the Italian tech tree, the three armoured cars, the Fiat 6614, Obel 74 and the R3 T106 FA, in my opinion, belong higher. They're part of the more modern doctrine and, once again, should they be fighting among tanks where armour against enemy tanks is a primary focus. The M47 with the 105mm gun is iffy. I think it should join its brothers at 8.0, but at the same time I'd hesitate to call it as good as the OF40 and it's definitely no leopard. And perhaps it makes a good contender with the second T-54, the one I also didn't know where to put. Leave it at 7.7 .7 or raise it up to 8.0 with the others. Either way, that choice can always be amended in time if it proves to be the wrong one. France doesn't really have anything that I see as needing to move up from below the AMX-30, and that's going to do it for all the changes. Oh, and all the 8.7 premiums, up tier them for fuck's sake. I mean, don't just move them up to 9.0 with this change, make them 9.3, with top tier going up to 10.7, that's definitely where they should be. All of them to 9.3 and the shot cal to 9.0. Also, the Radar SPA vehicles, which I talked about in the original Baby Steps video, it'll be linked on screen and in the description, and possibly the ZSU-57, which is a bit of a strange case, do you balance it as an AA vehicle or as a tank destroyer? Probably best to just leave it at 7.7 .7 for now, or given that we're taking away some of its more squishy opponents, you could remove its highest penetrating AP rounds and lower it down to 7.3, alongside the IS-3, Object 268, etc. It'd be actually decent as an anti-air vehicle there. Remember, this change is not about up-tiering vehicles that are too strong or overpowered, because the matchmaker isn't really changing for anything above 7.7. .7. What it does mean though is that we split the old doctrine cleanly from the new, and prevent M60s and AMX-30s from fighting King Tigers, instead pitting them against the sorts of opponents they were designed to be able to fight. Their performance should actually see an improvement with more equivalent tanks to fight, rather than them having to translate their playstyle to combat tanks they should never have to, the King Tiger once again being the main example. So with this move, we're actually not nerfing anything at all, besides the Object 120, but we are decompressing the battle ratings around this mid-tier, the beginning stages of the main battle tank ideology, where the old doctrine starts to disappear, which may be a bigger deal than you realise. It makes a lot more sense, this bigger split that represents the change in doctrine and offers much better balance, actually buffing a lot of tanks with very little effort. As a side note, I know a lot of players have suggested that with the grind being an issue and maybe Gaijin should allow players to start from midway through the tech tree if modern vehicles are all they want to play, allow them to skip the World War II stuff they don't care about, and this new 8.0 with all the early MPTs, those we've talked about, the M60, Leopard, etc, might seem the perfect place to offer this mid-range starting point. I'm not so sure I like this idea however, and I'm actually putting together a video discussion which I want to have out in 2 or 3 days time regarding this exact issue. You'll know it when it's out, I'm going to reference back to this video in that one which is why I wanted to get this one out first, but I think for now I'm going to end this one, I honestly didn't expect it to be this long, and I need to go make myself some dinner. Lads and lasses, I hope you have enjoyed this video and that if you did, you leave a like, subscribe to the channel, help me reach my goal of 50,000 subs by year's end, hit that notification bell, join the 360 squad, and of course let me know your thoughts about what I've said in this video in the comments section below. I hope I've managed to convince you that this is a good idea, I see it as the next logical step towards quote unquote fixing our BR compression issues, and I'd love to see Gaijin take this video under advisement and make these moves at least test them out in this manner. 
So if you do agree with what I've said, you think splitting the MBTs up from their older counterparts at 7.7 slash new 8.0, raising top tier to 10.7, that this is a good idea, please let me know with a comment down below and share this video around so that more people see it. If you don't agree or you're a wee bit confused, definitely ask away in the comments or come join my Discord server, The Coalition, and we can chat further there. Come follow me on Twitter and Twitch and make sure to check out Patreon or hit the join button here on YouTube if you wish to support the channel further. Thank you lads all so much for watching, have a lovely good day, and always remember, keep your bagpipes in one hand, whiskey in the other, keep your kilt on, and I'll catch you next time. I say a wee thank you to these lads for supporting me on Patreon. Captain Fubar, Geesley Gadarson, and Dark Recon. You lads are bro, if you wish to join them, come check out the link in the description below.